Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Karen from Atlassian. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, today we're going to be presenting our quarterly Forge Roadmap Review. Uh, this is a webinar that we do on a recurring basis and our presenter lineup includes members of the Forge product team as well as senior leadership. And they'll be talking about features that have either recently shipped in Forge or are coming soon. Um, so we do have a really packed schedule today, um, so I'll be brief, and then we can get to the exciting parts. Um, so first up, uh, the session is live. It is not pre-recorded. Um, so the session will be interactive, and you'll have a chance to ask the presenters your questions. Um, you can send in questions at any time during the presentation by using the uh, Q&A widget in your Zoom console. We'll save those questions until the end. Um, and we will try to get through as many as we have time for. Um, there might be a few questions that do require a little bit more research to properly answer. Um, so if we aren't able to get to your questions, um, please post them in the developer community and we'll address it afterwards. Um, and then lastly, I do wanna mention that today's webinar is being recorded. So we will send you the recording by email, um, usually within about three days or so. Um, and with that, we'll take a quick look at today's agenda. Um, so first up, we have Johnny Ferguson, who's the head of product management for Ecosystem Platform. Uh, Johnny will take us through the leadership perspective on the state of Forge. Uh, and then we'll spend the rest of the time covering the Forge roadmap and Q&A. Uh, we do have a full house today. We have eight product managers from the Forge team, um, and they'll all be talking about their specific areas of the roadmap. Uh, now, of course, we have the obligatory legal disclaimer. Um, so the pres presentation today will include previews of unreleased features uh, and forward-looking statements. So timelines and features are subject to change. We do ask that you consider these statements for informational purposes and not a binding commitment. Uh, we'll communicate changes to the best of our abilities, but these forecasts involve known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and assumptions. Um, so with that out of the way, um, I'm pleased to introduce our first speaker, uh, Johnny Ferguson. Uh, Johnny, I'll hand it to you. Thanks, Karen. Hi, everyone. It's great to be back with you for our quarterly roadmap call. For those of you who I haven't met, I'm Johnny Ferguson, the head of product management for Ecosystem Platform. There are three things I'm going to talk about today. The first is changes that are happening in our ecosystem and in ecosystems everywhere. I want to talk about how Atlassian is helping partners meet those changes. Outlining some of the challenges many of you have called out and how we plan to address them. And third is talking about how we are thinking about connect as we move forward. And of course, afterwards, we'll also be getting into all the great stuff coming out of our Forge roadmap. Our ecosystem is undergoing a transformation, but these changes aren't unique to Atlassian. Companies everywhere are trying to solve the problem of extensibility for security conscious customers. Customers who only would have considered on-prem 10 years ago and are now seeing that their security and compliance needs can be met in the cloud, which allows them to embrace the possibilities that SaaS versions of Atlassian's products have to offer. But there are still challenges. The bar is high for these customers and they have the same expectation for apps as they do for Atlassian products. A growing number of companies are building platforms similar to Forge. In a few years, hosted app platforms will become the norm. And here's the reason why. When customers have a fragmented and complex experience across all of the software vendors they engage with, it introduces risk. We want to minimize that risk and complexity for our customers. We're three years into this journey with Forge, and we still have more to do. Forge is our future unified developer platform, and it will become the backbone of our marketplace for many years to come. The data we have paints a clear picture that Forge is the best way to meet the current and future needs of customers and partners. In short, Forge will be around for a long time. We are making the platform stronger and better, and we aren't making short-term bets. We know not everyone can move to Forge yet, 
there are capabilities missing and concerns about operational needs like future costs. But we don't expect a blind leap of faith. We ask you to keep evaluating and adopting Forge where you can, and in instances where you can't yet, keep watching these roadmap updates to determine when your needs will be addressed. The burden of proof is on us to not just tell you that we are building what you need, but to show you where we are putting in the work. Some of you may have recently taken part in our developer satisfaction survey. This is a very important barometer that we use to understand what's working well and where we need to do more for our developer ecosystem. Here are the top concerns we hear from the partner sentiment survey. Reliability, docs, and number three is support. This survey isn't a just a point in time check. We compare results quarter over quarter to understand how things are trending and whether the interventions we put in place are effective. While all of the concerns in the top three are important, we take reliability particularly seriously. I want to call out that there's more to operational readiness than just reliability and stability of running apps on Forge is something we're looking at from several different angles. That said, I want to share a few concrete steps we are taking to zero in on uptime and make improvements. This month of August, we've declared an all hands on deck initiative in which our entire engineering organization responsible for both Forge and Connect is being dedicated to reliability improvements. Priorities for this work period include making sure all services have the right level of alerting instrumented. So far, 270 new SLOs have been added to help detect breaches. Identifying and filling gaps in incident response. We focused on making sure runbooks are available and accessible to aid in quick resolution and defining new developer on support processes. Our developer platform is a particularly interconnected part of the product, which adds complexity when root causes occur far upstream. We don't consider that an excuse for an incident that impact partners. We're taking a hard look at where reliability is below acceptable levels and putting in place a mitigation plan to ensure fewer incidents happen. And when they do, they are resolved quickly. This initiative is still underway and we're still in the process of measuring results. However, you can expect regular communication on this topic and we will share back the progress we have made. I want to acknowledge another feedback theme, and that's the future of Connect. We know this is a big concern. What I see reflected in these words is concern that the ecosystem of the future will offer fewer possibilities for developer. And we intend just the opposite. In regard to Connect, we will not discontinue any functionality until equivalent or better functionality exists in Forge. Flexibility is a great strength of Connect, and we're investing in making Forge more flexible as well. We'll speak to some of those plans later in the presentation when we dive into our roadmap. We're also investing in surfaces for innovation by building new capabilities into Forge. It's also important to note, we know some partners cannot use Forge until we deliver certain key features and we are working pragmatically through our top 10 blockers that partners fed back to us. We prioritize those capabilities based on impact and reach. In addition to this unblocking work, we're also investing in Forge's core capabilities to set the foundation for future innovation. Some interesting ideas we're experimenting with at the moment include a native Node.js runtime for Forge that will unlock faster invocations and the full power of Node.js. Client-side rendering of UI kit components that allow for faster client-side interactions and the full power of React. More customization and layout for UI kit components. 
and the ability to combine UI kit components and custom UI in the same extension points. Some of these ideas are pretty early in the development, but they're part of our ambition to make Forge more flexible and powerful to support more use cases. We've heard uncertainty from partners about how we are making decisions about which features we add to Connect versus Forge. I want to provide some clarity on our decision-making framework. Our North Star is to create a thriving ecosystem and more apps that enterprise customers will trust. We are also committed to providing stability for Connect builders. This includes pacing changes along a reasonable time frame and maintaining technologies your apps rely on. We know it's going to take time for Forge to have everything that's required, which is why we're going to make it easier for Connect apps to adopt components of Forge in stages. We're in the process of building a Connect to Forge platform unification process that will enable Connect builders to access Forge only features. This will allow existing Connect apps to use Forge modules without a full rewrite. A timeline for delivering this unification process will stretch over several years, but we are on track to unblock apps from reaching a partial state of interoperability in the next 12 months. There is an early access program coming by the end of this calendar year that will allow Connect apps to adopt OAuth, which is an important step towards enabling Connect apps to use parts of Forge. We'll share more in our next roadmap webinar. I want to share some of our decision-making criteria for how we are committed to supporting Connect builders and how we are deciding what to build in Connect versus Forge. Connect will continue to receive security patches and updates and Connect will continue to receive bug fixes. Connect will receive new features only in cases where there is an urgent need by migrating customers, for example, data residency. We will not extend Connect support to new Atlassian products like Atlas or Compass due to technical complexity and our strategic imperative of having a unified developer platform. In summary, Forge will be the default platform for delivering new features but we will make exceptions based on the use cases that customers need and the way that partners implement them. We've laid out some big challenges and we don't have all the answers. Complex problems require nuanced solutions. What I want to leave you with are some of the areas that we are researching with our partners and customers and that we will answer as part of our strategic decision-making. How should we improve security for apps across all platforms while giving developers the flexibility to build any kind of app? How should we invest in Forge so we can get where we need to be faster while supporting those of you who rely on Connect? How should we create a path for Connect developers to build on Forge with as little disruption and switching costs as possible? What we do know is there's no silver bullet for creating a secure app marketplace. There are a lot of different things we need to do in concert. Forge is an important part of our solution, but we will also carefully orchestrate increasing security for all app types and supporting our partners through this transition. We are committed to working and listening to our partners in this regard. I'll end my thoughts there and pass it over to Jacob who will kick off our roadmap review. Hello, my name is Jakub. I am here today uh, to share with you the roadmap update about the Tria Forge modules. In Q1, we have released three modules and promised seven. Oh, and yeah, I'm happy to inform that we have released even more, uh, something like nine modules and big kudos to all involved uh, teams. And this includes, of course, you partners. Thanks for all your cooperation and, and the feedback. Uh, it's, it's really important for us. 
uh, dashboards and issue background scripts are coming. Same when it comes to the configure and get started pages. Uh, we'll continue to work on uh, custom fields and UI modifications, and in the future, we'll start to work on JQL functions and display conditions. Yeah, so GITD properties released. Dashboards done. GSA pages ready to use. Same when it comes to custom fields improvements. Models are released. FHE review is ready. I like it. And then GI Global permissions and GI events, plus other smaller improvements. And let's go to UI modifications. And UI modifications is really important for us. It is a new type of the extensibility. Basically, an app can mm, change how built in fields behave, right? Like hide the field, change the value, change the description. And uh, in the preview release, we support um, uh, top popular fields on the global issue create. And it opens lots of different uh, use cases, like uh, interactive forms. So, for example, if a user selects the priority, a UI modification can change the, uh, the assigning. Uh, and please note that create issue templates might be implemented as a, a built-in feature by Atlassian. And uh, you may wonder what else uh, could be built. Yeah. And uh, so different kinds of uh, customizations for global issue create, like uh, a different view for reporters, a different view for uh, managers, uh, sky's the limit, lots of different use cases. I, I can't wait to see uh, what interest, what kind of interesting apps you will build. Yeah, animations. And uh, we strongly believe in new modifications. We have a long-term plan related to them. Uh, the next uh, biggest milestone is general availability GA. Uh, we plan to release it, it somewhere in the winter. We'll add support for additional fields and methods and remove some uh, limitations. Uh, you can track all improvements related to your modifications thanks to the uh, UI modifications component on the uh, Forge project. Uh, dashboards and issue background scripts will help you to build interactive uh, apps um, in September. I hope that we'll use them in September. You can use them as a browser memory cache or just to you know uh, consume the JavaScript uh, API. Uh, configure and get started pages uh, just to improve your app installation experience. Um, parity with Connect. I hope it will help you. Yeah, and Forge custom fields inline edit on the issue view. I am really happy to, that we have started to work on it. We will improve uh, custom fields, uh, Forge custom fields user experience on the issue view. It is one of the most popular views, so I, I can't wait to see it. And of course, it will be we will have a support for UI kit and uh, custom UI. Uh, when it comes to the further uh, future, we plan to add JQL functions. Something like six months. I will update. I will keep you posted. I will update the ticket uh, when we uh, know more. When we when dates will be more precise. Uh, it will enable apps to add JQL functions, and the user experience will be really close to the native JQL functions. Apps will be able to define operators and, and arguments, and thanks to them, you can improve GI users' search experience. And display conditions, I know that they're, and we know that they are needed. We want to do them properly. We want to have a secure, fast backend implementation. So we need a bit more time for them. Uh, and we want to have a full feature parity with uh, Connect. Probably we will start to work on them after JQL functions. Uh, and we'll continue to work on custom fields and UI modifications. When it comes to custom fields, we want to add support for different uh, views, probably boards and uh, new issue navigator. And we have um, ongoing discussion whether we need to support formatter only or maybe UI kit or custom UI. So if you have interesting use cases or strong opinions, let us know. And uh, on our radar is also support for team managed projects. When it comes to UI modifications after uh, GA, so after GA on the global issue create, we plan to support additional uh, views. It is a long-term plan, but uh, we want to also uh, give support to your modifications to other uh, views. Uh, I hope that all new modules will help you to build a lot of successful Forge apps. Uh, over to Gajana. 
thank you, Jakub. Um, my name is Grzyna, um, and I'm a product manager for uh, Forge. Um, on the last webinar, uh, I shared with you that we plan to work on Jira workflow extensibility for Forge. Uh, today, I'd like to summarize what we have managed to ship and what's coming next. So I'm really happy to announce that we've added several new functionalities uh, to the expression validators uh, from the Jira workflow validator module in, in Forge. So based on that, you can now define a custom UI for creating, editing, or viewing a validator configuration, save workflow configuration, configuration to the config variable, um, and use more context variables that are available in Jira expressions. Uh, we're also looking into metrics and feedback regarding validators uh, based on Lambda functions. Uh, this will help us um, uh, to uh, decide on the direction in which we'll be taking up uh, with this feature. Uh, apart from validators, uh, we've also introduced uh, a new Jira workflow conditional condition uh, Forge module. You can now configure your own workflow conditions using Jira expressions. At the moment, uh, we are working on custom UI for creating, editing, um, or viewing conditions configuration. So you should expect uh, this soon to be ready and announced to the developer community, and of course, in included in our change logs. Last but not least, um, we will continue our work in this area uh, and focus on uh, post conditions. Uh, we would like to deliver a complete experience for app builders around workflows uh, extensibility. If you do have any questions um, or feedback for us, leave us a comment under the um, links that I think Karen shared in the chat. Um, thank you. Um, and now I'll hand it over to Sushant. Hi, I'm Sushant, a product manager uh, looking over Forge Storage. So today I want to share some upcoming improvements uh, to the Forge hosted storage API, which we had touched on in the recent developer day presentation. So we are currently working on support for complex queries through custom entities, which will enable greater querying and storage capabilities on the Forge key value store. So this feature will introduce new ways of structuring data and indexes in Forge hosted storage, as well as allowing your apps to query by value, not just on key. Additional querying filters will also be provided on top of the existing starts with condition. But uh, please note that some conditions will be supported for range while others will be for filtering. For the initial release, uh, this new capability is planned to coexist with the existing untyped key value storage, and so it shouldn't really impact uh, your app's existing data. However, please be aware that in the future, apps may be required to utilize custom entities for structuring its data. We're still exploring what this will look like and what it will mean for your apps. We will provide more information on this once we know a bit more. Improving Forge hosted storage is a top priority for us. Uh, we understand that the current capabilities are quite limited and it was identified as one of the top blockers in adopting Forge. We believe that supporting query by value is the right initial step in addressing developer pain points around hosted storage, and it is one of the top requested storage features. Currently, we are targeting October to November timeframe for the EAP but we will be able to provide uh, an update on this as we get closer to the release. Now, uh, some more details about what we are planning as part of the EAP release. So firstly, when you are structuring your app data and indexes, we will let you define up to five custom entities per app environment, meaning 15 entities per app. Each entity can have up to 50 attributes and up to five indexes. These are just initial limits for the EAP and we plan to increase them in future iterations. You will also be able to define up to four data types, which are string, float, boolean, and any. But please note that the data type any is not going to be supported for queries, so it can't be used in any part of the indexes definition. You will also be able to specify two types of indexes. A simple index will be based on a single attribute on which you can apply range conditions when you do the query, 
while a named index can take an additional attribute that can be used to partition the data before any query conditions are applied. Now, I want to point out some known feature limitations. Firstly, there will be an object depth limit of 32 applied to any data set using custom entities. We don't anticipate this limitation to be a huge issue for most apps. However, uh, we do plan to explore this further and provide options to address this limit in future releases. Secondly, index attributes will have size limits. We are currently working on defining these limits and what it will mean for your apps. More details will be provided on this when we are closer to the release. Lastly, the EAP release will not support breaking changes. These include removing attributes or entities and changing types. We do plan to support breaking changes, but it will be in future release of the feature. Please note that as we are still finalizing this EAP solution, the actual release may have some changes to what I have outlined in this webinar. So once we get a bit closer to the release, we will provide more details of this solution and also uh, information on how to participate in the early access program. Next slide, please. So uh, for more details on the current proposed solution that we're exploring, please have a look at the developer community post that we published um, a while ago uh, with the link that's shown on the screen. Um, and as always, we would love to get your feedback on our plans to ensure that we are addressing your pain points and use cases. And so we can also adjust our solution as required. Thank you. Uh, I will now hand over to Edmund. Thanks, Sean. Hi everyone, my name is Edmund. I'm a senior product manager uh, on Bitbucket Cloud. So I'm not part of the uh, core Forge team. So I'm here to talk to you a little bit about Bitbucket Cloud and what our plans for uh, Forge are. So you would have heard a lot of people talk uh, in regards to Forge about how it's meant to be kind of a unified developer ecosystem and framework that goes across the entire Elastic stack. Um, and this is an area where Bitbucket Cloud's implementation of Connect um, has been a little bit lacking in the past and it's something that we're really heavily focused on with our implementation of Forge. So we are focused on making sure that the skills required to build extensibility functionality in Bitbucket Cloud um, are going to be the exact same sets of skills required to build something, something like Jira or Confluence. It's a really key focus of ours. Next slide. Our goal is to build the most extensible cloud SCM and CICD solution that there is available in the market. We believe that there is an opportunity to differentiate Bitbucket Cloud from other source control management and CICD solutions. Uh, and that is heavily going to be based around extensibility. So we're really leaning into Forge and we're really leaning into the potential uh, that is available to Bitbucket Cloud by really embracing extensibility and embracing the new tooling that Forge makes available for us. So what's actually coming down the pipe. So Forge is coming to Bitbucket Cloud, uh, as I've said. We're looking to expand the extension points that are available in Bitbucket Cloud. We know that there are some limitations with the existing extension points um, with Connect, and we're looking to remediate those and expand them out. We're looking to things like Bitbucket Server and DC as sort of inspirations for where those additional extension points are, but we're also working closely with partners and looking outside of um, the Bitbucket ecosystem itself to understand where we should add those additional extension points. We are adding some really exciting new features to Bitbucket Cloud powered by Forge. So we are taking a slightly more, you could say, opinionated approach to our Forge implementation in that we're actually adding entire new feature sets to Bitbucket that are designed to be kind of powered by Forge. So we are really going to be leaning into Forge in that way and actually going to be building features that are kind of built around Forge specifically. And we're also looking to expand our marketplace monetization offering uh, in the future. So we know that a lack of monetizable marketplace is obviously a huge gap for partners looking to build extensions in Bitbucket Cloud. Um, and that's one of the reasons why the Bitbucket Cloud marketplace has not taken off in the same way that Jira and Confluence ones have or in Bitbucket Server. So that's something that we're absolutely aware of and that we are looking to address as early as we can. So why are we doing this? We know the current Connect implementation is, is relatively inconsistent and it does have some pretty strong limitations. And we're looking to address those with our implementation of Forge. Forge is a really powerful tool and we believe it can really create a differentiator between uh, our competitors and Bitbucket Cloud. Um, and so we're really kind of stepping up and we're gonna be taking full advantage of that. 
we see the future of Bitbucket Cloud as being driven by our ecosystem. We do not intend to be an all-in-one solution that gives you every solution under one roof provided by Atlassian. We want to have an ecosystem that exists around uh, source control and CI/CD, and we think that source control and CI/CD is a very natural fit for this kind of ecosystem model. So, when are we looking to actually have something available for people to just sort of see and try? It? So, we're looking, we're targeting an EAP. Uh, for sometime between October this year and March next year. Um, and that's really heavily dependent on some of those new features that we're talking about earlier and when we can get those available and out into Bitbucket Cloud uh, to be um, trialed um, with Forge. So more details will be coming out closer to those dates and we will be looking for those marketplace changes a bit later. So probably later in 2023. Cool, and I will hand over to Adam. Awesome, uh, thank you, Edmund. Hi everyone. Um, the last time we spoke, I talked about a project that was just kicking off uh, to bring the custom UI bridge up to parity with Connect's JavaScript API and happy to report that the project is now complete. Um, next slide. The custom UI bridge is the JavaScript API that lets your custom UI front ends talk to things like the host product and your back end resolvers and product APIs, etc. And we've added a bunch of new features that were highly requested from developers like you guys. Um, so what does that include? Uh, for starters, there's the you can create product flags like the one you can see on the slide here. Uh, so you can alert users when something important has happened, whether it's a success or an error. Um, you can add that last mile of UX to keep your users informed. Um, we've also made a couple of improvements to the modal. There's new, a new size max that takes up almost the whole screen. And um, you can also disable the ability to close the modal by clicking on the overlay or hitting the escape key. So both those things, great improvements for when users are doing something pretty complicated in one of your modals and they need that extra space. And also the confidence that they won't accidentally close it before they're done doing what they're doing. Um, as Jakob mentioned, you can now refresh data in the JIRA issue view, which goes via the custom UI bridge. And you can also um, reload the whole page uh, for any um, Forge extension point now as well, which is cool. Uh, we've expanded the permissions on the iframe, so you can now write to the clipboard and capture the user's display. And back to that next slide, please. We've also added uh, an events API so that means if your app has multiple extension points on the same page, uh, those extension points can now talk directly to each other. So it's a simple example of two dashboard gadgets. Um, but obviously, there's lots of opportunities to, to exploit this one. You know, in the Jira issue view, you can imagine a custom field talking to an issue panel, things like that. So uh, really cool. And on my final slide here, we've also added uh, more details to the context object that you get back including importantly, the user's time zone and locale. So you can start to do internationalization uh, for your custom UI front ends. And next up, I'm gonna give a couple of updates on behalf of the Confluence team. Um, firstly, we have added uh, export functionality to the Forge macro, and you can define a view of your macro for when the Confluence page is exported to PDF, email, Word, et cetera. I'm going to click over to the next slide. Um, we've also brought over the custom content module from Connect, just released in the last week or so. Um, and custom content allows you to register a new custom content type that behaves like the other built-in content types and confluence like pages and blog posts, et cetera. And next slide, please. Another couple of features that have come over from Connect are the getting started and config modules. So um, yeah, much like some, some of the other features I've mentioned, just the ability to add that little bit of extra UX to your app uh, to make sure customers are having uh, a great experience, uh, especially when they first install it. Um, as Yaka mentioned earlier, same functionality is being worked on in Jira, so look out for that soon. And um, other things coming for Confluence soon include the most requested feature at the moment, which is inline macros. Uh, and keyboard shortcuts and a, and a bunch of other things that are coming over from Connect. So stay tuned uh, for more updates from Confluence. That is all from me and I'll hand over to Julia. Hello, hi, um, I'm Julia. I uh, wanted to give you a quick update on the OAuth Scopes project. 
Last time uh, I presented to you, we had just shipped uh, the granular scopes um, project. Um, you can see on the next slide, a quick recap on what um, the scopes initiative is, is about. Um, so it's all about app transparency we're looking at. We want to give customers a clear and comprehensive overview of what data an app can access um, and provide that information on marketplace and consent screen when installing an app. Um, why are we doing this? Um, app scope transparency is, is a foundational trust deliverable for our customers and is now um, part of our wider trust program as well. So as I mentioned, the granular scopes um, um, shipment um, started in, in February, but unfortunately we had to uh, pause the rollout in, in April, shortly after ship date, due to some technical um, issues that we encountered and also um, negative feedback received from, from some of our partners. So at the moment, what we're doing is we're reevaluating um, the scopes project overall and um, define a way forward, because at the moment we are um, maintaining two sets of scope, which is not ideal. You can see on the next slide how that's looking at the moment in, in the developer consoles on the, um, my apologies, a bit small, but um, in the, you see here the JIRA APIs, we more um, um, prominently show the, the, what we refer to classic scopes. So these are the ones that uh, most of you will be still using. Um, but right next to it, you could um, choose to um, select granular scopes. Um, and when you do that, you, you see um, the granular version of the JIRA scopes, uh, quite a few of those. Um, and at the top, we, um, you will see a message referring to a, um, to a, a limitation of the number of scopes that you can adopt for your app, which is at the moment 50. That's, that's one of the technical issues that I was referring to. So that's a header size issue we, um, we encountered. So um, it will, if you try to adopt uh, more than 50 scopes for your app, you, you will uh, run into an error message and, and need to change your scopes again. So as you can see, not ideal. Um, so we're working on uh, kind of getting rid of both of these um, um, scope sets and define a new set. Um, so currently, the um, work um, what, uh, that we're doing now is um, on the next slide, um, we're sitting somewhere between assess and listen. So we're looking at, uh, we reevaluated the problem statement, hasn't gone away. We still, we're still committed to provide more app transparency for our customers. We looked, um, we looked for a long time into what we have done in terms of research in our um, past concept testing. What have we possibly missed? Where did we go wrong with our um, communication um, and all of that? At the moment, we are um, conducting partner interviews, one-on-one -on -one interviews, as well as a focus group that's happening uh, later this week, which I'm very much looking forward to. So we get more feedback from, from our partners um, on the past experience, maybe some best practice on, on, on what they expect us to do. We continue to communicate um, on CDAC and what we're doing, talk to our customers and internal stakeholders. So this is where, what we're doing at the moment. And once we settle on a, on a way forward on a solution, um, we would um, start concept testing with partners and customers, um, extended internal end-to-end -end testing of various use cases. And when it comes to deployment, um, pre-announce um, a, um, a shipment date um, run a slow release this time as well and ensure, um, should certainly ensure backward compatibility. I haven't um, given you any um, idea on the, on the ship date for the new set of scopes yet because it's early days. It's not going to be um, before early next year. Um, so there's still, still some time, but yeah, the closer, the closer we get, the more confidence we have in, uh, in the solution where um, we will be running with, um, I'll, I'll update you um, on that, hopefully in the next uh, webinar anyway. That's all from me, and I uh, hang over, hand over to Aggie. Thank you, Julia. Hi, everyone. My name is Angelina, and I'm one of the PMs on the Forge team. I look after the operational side of Forge apps, and in the last couple of quarters, um, I have been concentrating on Forge app observability features. I'll be giving you an overview of some of the new features and improvements that we have shipped recently, starting with the change in the way we handle log sharing, 
Oh, next slide. So some of you may recall that late last year, we shipped a continuous access to Forge logs. With this release, we enabled Forge app developers to access their app logs via the developer console in order to troubleshoot issues with their apps. However, to do that, developers had to ask their users to enable log sharing. Since this release, we've learned that the process of enabling log sharing has been time intensive, both for you and for your users. And users often required your assistance and guidance to share the logs. Moreover, those of you with free Forge apps don't have access to the user contact details through the marketplace report, so are therefore unable to contact your users to request log sharing to troubleshoot. We are happy to announce that starting from last week, log sharing is being enabled during the Forge app installations. When a user installs your app, they will see an additional information advising them that by proceeding with installation, the logs data will be shared with you, the app developer. Um, know that users can still choose to disable log sharing once the installation is complete. We believe that this change will increase the percentage of users who are sharing logs, therefore increase the amount of log data you have access to and make it easier and faster for you to troubleshoot issues with your use that your users are experiencing with your app. Um, now, know that this change affects new Forge app installations only. Uh, there will be no change to the log sharing status for existing installations. This is to ensure that users who have taken into consideration the ability to control access to the app logs can continue to use their apps without any disruption. Next, um, I want to talk a bit about Forge app alerts. Also, starting from today, uh, we will start, you will start receiving email alerts every time the invocation success rate drops to 99% or below. The drop in the success rate should last at least five minutes for the alert to be triggered, and we have limited the alerts to just one every 24 hours. Note that the alert will be sent to the app owner's email, and initially app owners would not be able to add different email to receive the alerts or change the metric threshold. However, we are considering those future features for next releases. If you find those emails being a bit noisy, you can always go and temporarily mute the alerts from the developer console. Next, um, again, today we have released the third feature. Um, it's a new detailed view of your app invocation errors. We understand that checking the sites one by one to find those with the most errors or the lowest success rate can be time consuming, especially for apps with hundreds of installations. So starting from today, you can access a new screen that shows site specific information about your app's invocation errors. Um, now moving to what's coming next. Um, we will be shipping an overlay of deployment events and ability to group metrics by version. This would make it easy to correlate changes in the metrics to new or old versions of your app. We expect those to land sometime next quarter. Next, we are also making improvements to the existing log access feature. Um, now, when log sharing is being enabled during the app installations, you will start seeing an increased volume of data coming through the log screen in the developer console. As such, we want to make improvements to this screen. For example, the team will be looking to increase the number of locations that can be loaded on the page uh, and introduce filtering by log level to help you find what you're looking for faster and more efficiently. Also, later in the calendar year, you will start seeing metrics that reveal how your app is tracking towards platform limits and quotas. And this is all for me. I will hand over now to Rohit. Thank you. Thanks, Aggie. Um, hi, everyone. It's my first time uh, presenting here. Um, so I'm really happy to sort of meet and introduce myself to all of you. Uh, my name is Rohit, and I'm a product manager on the Forge team. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about a feature that we've shipped to uh, make your support experience better. Uh, next slide, please. 
So before I get into the feature itself, uh, just a reminder that um, among the top three developer concerns that Johnny talked about um, earlier in the presentation, one of them is um, support. Next slide, please. And so with that in mind, we've recently shipped uh, a new unified developer support portal. So previously, what, what happened was developers would have to go to different pages on our developer page to actually raise queries depending on the type of query. So it would be a different page for marketplace queries, a different page for developer support queries. And so that's obviously not a great experience. And so I'm really happy that we've been able to now have a new uh, unified page at developers.atlassian.com slash support, where you can raise all um, queries, no matter um, you know what you're, no matter if it's about marketplace or if it's a migration or a listing query, they're all now on one page. Uh, an important point is this isn't a mere cosmetic change because we've also consolidated all the support desks um, into, into one with a key eco help. And we've also invested in increasing the size of our support team. So in addition to having a single uh, place to raise support queries, you're also going to see improved response times and responses. Now, this is just the first um, first step because support improving the support experience is a top priority. Um, and so this is our first milestone. What, what we're going to see in future presentations from me is um, is uh, more features and more releases to make the support and documentation experience much better for our developer partners. And I look forward to sharing more details of that in future webinars. Um, with that, uh, I'd like to say thanks and hand it back to Karen for our Q&A. Okay, great. Thank you so much to all of our speakers. Um, so at this point, we'll switch over and answer a few questions from the audience. Um, Sushant, if you wouldn't mind turning your camera on. Awesome. So our first question is from Julia Wester. Um, will the improvements being talked about for Forge hosted storage also improve the speed that it takes to query and return data? Cool. <clears throat> Thank you. Hi, Julia. Thanks for your question. Um, so we are continually monitoring the performance of the querying capabilities and adjusting our plans accordingly throughout the year to continually improve the performance as required. So we increased the API, uh, storage API operations limits uh, earlier in the year in February and more recently in June based on feedback from the developer community, though at these times it were uh, it was for the update operations where we saw the most rate limiting and uh, pain points uh, coming from partner feedback. However, we will continue to observe feedback and continually improve uh, the performance uh, of across the API capabilities in future. So, if your app is hitting um, you know, specific performance limitations and requires higher limits, please let us know um, by submitting a request on the Forge Jira project uh, with the details of the pain point, um, uh, you know, any specific requirements or use cases, and if you, uh, if known, um, what a new limit you'd expect uh, for your app that will be required. And we regularly review these requests uh, so we can provide an update there. Um, but yeah, we, we will continue um, improving the performance um, continually uh, across the year. Thanks. Thanks, Karen. Great. Thanks, Sushan. Um, Yako, the next question will be for you. Uh, this one's also from Julia. So we have a Forge app that we want to render the issue information in, but we can't just use an issue view. Instead, we have to rebuild the issue view. Is it possible for a Forge app to display the issue view screen in an app iframe, either with custom UI or UI kit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not possible. We tested opening the view issue model from the issue view, and we just have discovered a lot of lots of bugs. Uh, and we uh, decided to work on the new modules like refresh um, issue view or background script instead uh, of it, because it is a huge effort only for limited use cases. So for now, the decision is that it is better to work on uh, different things than, than this one. But we know about it, uh, but it's just a lot, a lot of work. Okay, thank you, Jakob. Uh, our next question, uh, Grajna, this will be for you. Um, this comes from Stefan. Will there be UI kit support for workflow modules anytime soon? 
Um, hi, Stefan. Uh, thank you for this question. This is a really a great uh, piece of feedback for us. So yes, you're right. We have been focusing at first to unblock building for jobs around local workflows area. And um, UI kit support uh, from workflow models is on our, on our longer term roadmap um, as we are gathering your feedback um, and exploring uh, this area. So I'd love to understand uh, your use case um, like more deeply, uh, like please leave a comment on the community and we'd love to follow back on this with you as we are exploring this area as we speak. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Grajna. Uh, John, the next question will be for you. Um, this also comes from Stefan. Um, would you be able to speak to whether enabling marketplace support for new products like Bitbucket and Compass primarily depends on a business or a leadership decision, or is it uh, systemic complexities or blockers that are more on a technical level? Uh, yeah, thanks, Stefan, uh, for the question. L you know, like anything um, the, in an ecosystem, when it re involves, uh, you know, products coming on board a new platform, it's a combination of technical complexities, um, priorities in roadmaps, investment vehicles that we have, uh, Atlassian priorities and also product priorities. Uh, we are very interested in making uh, ecosystem platform as easy as possible for our first party products. Uh, and you mentioned uh, Bitbucket and uh, Compass, um, Atlas and Trello are also um, our partners or our first party products that we want to get on board to marketplace. Um, and there's quite a lot of effort involved um, an investment involved in doing um, doing those activities. Uh, when it comes to the actual products themselves, they have priorities because they're quite often um, engaged in go-to-market activities or they're in beta or early access. So it's it's a bit of orchestration, but it's um, uh, we are certainly very interested in bringing as many of our products onto our platform um, marketplace as well as ecosystem platform um, as soon as possible. Great, thank you, Johnny. Uh, Jakob, we'll bring you back for the next one. Um, so this question comes from Roman. Uh, I believe it's in reference to Jira service management. Uh, so Roman says, we have an important use case to add information to the portal for customers, which is not possible at the moment. Uh, can you update us on the status? Sure, work has been started. It's not so easy as we thought initially. Uh, nevertheless, we plan to finish work something in the winter. So, uh, Skunk. Great. Um, thank you. Uh, Adam, I'm going to bring you back for actually the next couple of questions. <laughs> so uh, we'll put you in the hot seat. Um, this question is from Daniel Wester. Is multi-user ownership of apps coming? And if so, when? Yes, uh, it is currently in progress at the moment. Um, we're just about to kick off the um, to work to start making it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, definitely, hopefully, yeah, expect more, expect more, expect to hear more about this in the, the next webinar. So. Okay. Um, and next question, this one is from Wolfgang. Any updates on removing the user specific allow access prompt? Um, almost exactly the same answer, I guess. Uh, it is. Uh, on the roadmap for this quarter, it is we have started, but we're we're sort of still in this one a little bit earlier, still in the um, exploration uh, analysis phase of of making that change. Um, so yes, yeah, stay tuned for, for updates. But it is another thing that's top of our list from your feedback. So um, yeah, we're working on it. Okay, uh, next one for you as well. Uh, how do we debug forge invocation errors in the Atlassian platform? Um, by using some of the great new tools Aggie was talking about, I guess, but also, uh, yeah, you know, if you're, if you're writing console.log lines in your, in your Forge functions, um, it's available in the, the Forge log service, which you can access via the CLI, um, or in the developer console. Um, and yeah, there's a couple of good guides in the docs around, uh, monitoring your apps and, uh, accessing app logs. So, uh, yeah, head to developer.lassian.com. Great. Um, and then 
There's another question about multi-user app ownership, just uh, zeroing in on the time frame a little bit. Uh, so Matthias asks, can we expect the multi-user app ownership for Forge to come sometime between October and December this year, which is indicated on the public roadmap, the Trello board? Yep. Yeah, that's that's still the plan. So uh, obviously with your disclaimer at the start, Karen, uh, that things are subject to change, but that's certainly uh, what the plan is at the moment. Uh, Jakob, this next one will be for you. Um, uh, could you speak to the latency issues between Forge and Jira, um, as well as just spin up time and what is being done to improve it? Yes, yeah, so when it comes to Jira Forge performance, uh, like it is a uh, hot ongoing discussion uh, internally, and we uh, plan to find a few ideas for improvements. Uh, and uh, so, no decisions, no decisions at this moment, but uh, we, we want to find those ideas for improvements and then decide whether we will work on them and how fast uh, Forging JR should be. So discussions in progress, but nothing to share at this moment. Okay, thank you. Um, one more question for you, Jakob. This one is from Christoph. Um, we've created a custom Forge field. We'd like this custom field to react to changes made to other fields from the create issue screen. For example, when the priority value is updated, our Forge field should be notified and react accordingly. Is this possible with Forge? Looks like a great example for UI notifications, right? Uh, but like two things, UI notifications are coming for the issue, issue view, but this is the long-term plan. Um, another way how we can think about it is uh, with uh, usage of uh, GR refresh page API and uh, issue and background scripts. And we have some, uh, let's say, uh, spikes whether we will be able to enable apps to listen to events. That will be very powerful, but um, like it's it's very early. So like uh, long term UI modifications, short term uh, maybe something, but nothing to uh, to share at this moment. Great, thank you, uh, Aggie. Uh, we'll bring you back. This next question is for you. Awesome. Uh, this one is from Vincent. Um, so regarding the forge alerts by email, is it possible to change this email or add additional email addresses? Thanks, Karen. Alerts will be sent to the app owner emails initially, and app owners would not be able to add different email to receive the alert. However, we are considering this for our future iterations. I encourage you to comment on the community announcement and uh, give us your feedback. Any details you might have for your use case would really help us prioritize such features in the future. Thanks. Great, thank you. Uh, Johnny, this next question will be for you. Uh, this one comes from Artem. We have Johnny back. Um, how does revenue sharing work for apps that are written with Forge? Are there any plans that uh, imply changes to payment models uh, the marketplace offers for Forge adopters, uh, like early bird adopters? Uh, yeah, so we'll uh, be releasing a little bit more information around the Forge monetization model in probably maybe in the next webinar. Or, um, we're just uh, future kind of future proofing that and making sure that we come out with one solid statement. Uh, the, the current model will continue for the for the period that we've advertised uh, overall, but we are getting plans together to announce a more permanent sort of this is how we will do monetization. Um, for the longer term. Um, so we're just testing out some of those theories at the moment, but we're expecting to be able to bring that out. Hopefully, uh, let me think, um, hopefully before the end of the year, I think um, is how it's going. Okay. Well, I might just go back to the previous question to uh, Karen, the Atlassian Cloud Premium offers an allow list functionality for both Jira and Confluence to restrict IPs that can access the site. It says, uh, when will Forge apps be able to handle such functionality? But I might just reframe that a little bit. Uh, so we, our, our parent products um, through our admin hub allow um, support IP allow listing. So we intend in ecosystem to support IP allow listing um, 
probably tactically in the short term, but hopefully uh, in longer term, it'll be a more permanent feature. And we'll work with the administration side of our of our business in our enterprise teams to, to bring that to market. And we're, we're kind of in the planning stage for that now. Um, we don't have any roadmap items for it though. Great, thank you for addressing that. Um, we are at the top of the hour. So I think we're going to cap it there. Um, thank you so much to all of our speakers. Thank you to everyone who joined us on the call today. Um, we will see you again next quarter for our next Forge Roadmap webinar. Um, until then, take care. <laughs>